opportunity here. So we just celebrated July 4th in Nashville, where we had a record 350K who attended the downtown fireworks. After a year when neighbors in my city lost homes from tornadoes and then loved ones from the pandemic, and then woke up on Christmas morning to learn that downtown had been bombed and then had flooding, as I did in my apartment, we were definitely ready for some light. I met a friend visiting downtown last weekend, and the crowds of tourists seem to say that happy days are here again. Last year's lockdowns grounded us, and many have made travel a priority to make up for lost time. Canceled plans resulted in unused airline vouchers and hotel credits, so many are planning what the industry is calling revenge travel on epic adventures, where they'll go farther and stay longer. Research shows that just the act of planning travel raises endorphins and makes us instantly happier. Today, we're talking about travel abroad. Now, as is always the case when deciding when to stop planning and start traveling, please check updates on advisories and qualifications for travel with your home country. In the U.S., that would be travel.state.gov and those of your destination country. Since this episode was recorded a few weeks ago, restrictions such as curfews in Italy have been lifted and U.S. citizens are allowed to fly there again. Even so, remember that circumstances can change quickly, so check official info no matter where you plan to go. After travels in 27 countries across four continents in the Caribbean, I'm often asked which place is my favorite. If I could go to only one European country for pure pleasure, welcoming people, food, wine, sunshine, for art where the Renaissance began and landscapes that provide a beauty break for the soul, it would be Italy. In the previous episode, I talked with two archaeologists and tour guides based in Naples. Today, we're with Rosa, a local tour guide on the path of the gods. She is on her terrace in Salerno on the Amalfi Coast a place as close to heaven as I can imagine on this earth. After nine trips to Italy, I can't wait to go again and to explore Naples and the Amalfi Coast longer. During COVID, when I needed an escape, I would sometimes go to eat on patios of my favorite restaurants in Nashville, Tennessee. On Southern Girl Gone Global, I'll mention how to escape to Italy this summer wherever you live while planning a trip for real from an Italian wine class I'm taking, to Airbnb online experiences, to an Italian language class that I highly recommend. You can go global this summer too. Italian for Fun has been teaching Nashvillians the language and culture of Italy for 16 years. During COVID, they went global too. Now they offer online courses so that wherever you live, you can take them. Please see the link to italianforfun.com in the notes where you could sign up for their newsletter for updates and see their list of online courses. Thanks for being here. Let's get on with it. Oh, blue skies. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> is, it, How are you? Is, is it chilly there? A little chilly? Yes, a little bit. It's not so warm as it should be. <laughs> if you would, please tell them your name and where you are right now. My name is Rosa, and I'm in Salerno, that is at the entrance of the Amalfi Coast. Yes. Very close to Naples in Campania region. <laughs> yes, absolutely beautiful. And, you know, we, um, so the way we met is that uh, a friend of mine said she discovered these online uh, Airbnb experiences and she said this year for our birthday instead of buying something let's do this together and so um, for my birthday I chose to do this with Rosa and yes. she and my friend Sally was there as well so that's how we met and um, if you would just tell them a little bit about what we did with that experience Yes, of course. Um, the experience, the online experience is Limoncello, the Amalfi Coast Limoncello Tribe. 
So the idea of this experience is to share my knowledge with people about the lemons and how to use the lemons to make a nice alcoholic drink that we call limoncello, that is very famous on the Amalfi Coast. And um, so um, uh, I, I meet people virtually uh, using uh, this uh, platform and, uh, and uh, we prepare limoncello together. So I uh, show the secrets of this preparation and we talk also a little bit about how to use the leftover lemons and I used to prepare uh, other kind of recipes. It's a way for me to continue virtually my job as I'm a, I, I am a guide. I work as a guide on Yamafi Coast. Yes, and so we're going to definitely, what we're mostly going to talk about today is the um, where she would, would take you should you go there, as where she would take you as a tour guide. Um, but before we do, I always like to ask a few questions just to check in. This podcast, like the Airbnb experiences online, really grew out of the pandemic. And so uh, it started with me checking in with a friend in Spain last year, exactly, I think about a year ago, and to see what was going on there. And then we just kind of did that with people, uh, you know, abroad and also people in the U.S. So what is the COVID situation there now? How has it changed? Is it better? What's happening? Yes. Now, it's going very well in the sense that we are restarting all the activities in our life. Um, we, it's, it's since few weeks that is happening because uh, uh, the situation is going better in the sense that we are less uh, uh, people sick and uh, so uh, people are vaccinating. So um, I, I can tell you that the situation is very is going very well. And so basically, uh, at the moment, uh, we can do everything we we want to do. Like we can try we can work, we can meet other people, and we are very happy of that because uh, it was a very long time <laughs> staying yes. at home, and that's the reason why I started to um, work with Airbnb, with this online experience since October, yes. and that's uh, yeah. the idea. And, yes. and, you know, two days ago, from the t now we're actually, of course, uh, recording this and it'll come out later, but... Uh, I think it was May 17th, 18th, it was announced that um, Americans can travel again to Italy. So we're very excited about that. <laughs> Yeah, fortunately, because uh, the most part of people uh, loving this part of Italy comes from U.S., from the America. So we are very happy to welcome you again, uh, and this is a special place for you. It's a yeah. kind of dream. <laughs> it certainly is. Okay. So, Rosa, um, yes, we're very excited here because we got word this week in the U.S. that we will be allowed to come back to your beautiful country. And so, you know, for most people, Italy is the dream. Um, for me personally, the Amalfi Coast is the dream. I, uh, I, when I was living in Morocco, I did a lot of traveling throughout Europe and I saved the Amalfi Coast for last. I had driven through it with students that I had taken to Europe, you know, many years ago. And I knew that I wanted to go back. I wanted to spend a whole week just there. I had all my reservations. And then unfortunately something happened that I'm going, I'm writing about in my memoir, uh, that prevented me from coming. And so I, that dream was deferred, but I am determined that it's going to happen so I can slow down and just enjoy my time there. Um, you know, we went to Sorrento briefly. We went to Capri, which was beautiful. But I really want to have time to just soak it all in. So I guess you're excited that, that tourists are coming back. Yes, absolutely. We are very happy to welcome again tourists because uh, we spent the last uh, season without tourists. And so now we have, I miss the, you. <laughs> I want to guide, I want to uh, work. For me, my job, you know, it's a kind of, a, it's a passion, first of all. I love to share the passion for this place. I was born here and um, I I'm agree with you. This is a kind of dream. Oh, we we call the time spent here dolce vita, sweet life. This means exactly to slow down, enjoy life, 
and not uh, not be in a hurry in any way and enjoy the small things and the view uh, because uh, everywhere you go on the Amalfi Coast you have a spectacular view that makes you dream. So uh, even for me that I was born here, it's every day different and it's a kind of dream for me as well. So I'm very proud to share uh, my, my knowledge and my passion with people coming here for special tours because I'm a walking and hiking guide. I'm not a classical touristic guide because I prefer to walk. This, I think, uh, is the best way to discover the coast, the most relaxing way. Sure, absolutely. So tell us uh, about the, the tour that you do, and, and I definitely want to hear about and tell the, you know, everyone about the Walk of the Gods. And let's... Yeah. Yes, we have, uh, imagine that the Amalfi Coast, uh, on the Amalfi Coast, we have only one coastal road that is quite narrow and they, it's very challenging to drive on this coastal road, especially even for me. Yeah? And so uh, the best way is to use the, the connecting path between villages that were once the only way to reach a place from, uh, from the coast to inland or from the inland to the coast. So you mentioned the path of the gods. The path of the gods is the Nike, uh, listed as one of the 10 most beautiful hikes in Europe, uh, starting from 600 meters above the sea level from a small village called Agerola and going up to Positano, up to the sea level. And uh, you have a spectacular view of the Amalfi Coast line up to the island of Capri. And it, the name is the part of the gods. You can imagine why. <laughs> because the local people think that the gods should live there uh, because of the extreme beauty of that place. But the path of the gods is not the only one, the only hike. We have several hikes, very, very nice, uh, I would say wonderful, not so very nice, not only nice. And uh, for example, we have the Mills Valley, that is a valley above Amalfi. Um, you cannot imagine the landscape, it's, uh, it's impressive there because uh, you, can, you don't expect to find that kind of landscape on the Amalfi coast. It's a kind of rainforest with the beautiful waterfalls, huge waterfalls, and uh, in, in, in what I call uh, a, kind of, uh, a kind of garden, a kind of um, uh, special garden in, in, in inside the mountains. So it's quite spectacular and it's one of the hikes that I really suggest to people to do. Uh, during this hike, you can find also agriturismo, so a kind of farm, family farm, where you can uh, sit and have a very nice uh, meal uh, based on local and seasonal food. And uh, these add uh, a lot of value to this experience. So as I'm a local guide, I, I like to give people the best that we have. So... Uh, I think that you, when you come here, you should be a traveler, not a tourist. That's my idea. So when they come, when uh, people, friends come and visit me, I want to share the best. And so that's the, the my idea. That's my idea of uh, visiting the Amalfi Coast. It makes such a difference, you know. Um, so one summer I taught uh, English in northern Italy, and we stayed at a agriturismo. And uh, the food was just amazing. And even the, the people that owned it, their friends owned or family owned the winery next door. So everything was local. And that is, but when you meet people that are locals, it changes everything. It's such a different experience. And honestly, you know, I love taking students on trips, but some of them where, you know, where you're on a big bus and you're rushed and, you know, our guides were Italian a lot of times, but because we were on such a strict schedule, so I am just longing to go back. And I already had my room in Positano. And I will oh. say, you know, part of that is because of one of my favorite movies of all time, Under the Tuscan Sun. And because uh, she had an Italian boyfriend that lived there, and it was just beautiful. And another was an older movie that my sister and I loved, and it's called uh, Only You with Robert Downey Jr. And it was actually filmed, part of it was filmed there. It was the hotel. Yes, yes. So I couldn't afford that hotel, of course, but yeah. I had a place where I had the same view. So um, that was much more reasonable. And yeah. so while we're talking about that, oh, well, okay, there's so many things I want to ask you. So first of all, um, if someone were staying in Positano or just that area down on the water, 
close to the water. I know there's a lot of steps to get there. But what okay. are some places that people should definitely go to eat? Your favorite uh, places? Yes. Uh, um, about the Amalfi Coast in general? Yes. Or are you talking about uh, well, first, only Positano? Let's start with Positano and then we'll move out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me think a bit because of Positano there are several places like uh, the Covo dei, dei Saraceni, Il Covo dei Saraceni. It's an Italian name, of course. It's a, a great restaurant. And then uh, there is another one in a small village above Positano. The name is Monte Pertuso. Uh, and um, uh, I have to remember the name, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. Now, on your um, food tour, yeah. tell us, like, where do you take people to eat and what do they eat? Because you do a food tour. My favorite places are uh, are based in, mostly in Amalfi uh, because uh, it's one of my favorite places. But also in Praviano, there is close to Positano. For example, talking about, about Praviano, uh, one of my favorite restaurants is Casai with a K. Okay. Uh, it's a nice view. It's along the, the road, but with a very nice uh, sea view. And it's a very special restaurant. Um, I love classical me meals, but I also love the experimentation. So I love this combination. Yes. Uh, so the, that one, the Kazai, is, uh, is this kind of restaurant. Uh, the, a mix of classical and experimentation. Then in Amalfi, uh, I have um, I go, I guide people in this farm that I love. Uh, the name is uh, Fore Porta. Fore Porta. It's along the Mills Valley. And it's absolutely amazing. Uh, they produce everything they have, they, 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 they serve, it's produced in their gardens, and they are very, very nice people. Uh, then uh, I have another special place that I can suggest to you, uh, that it's a restaurant on the sea, just facing the Sea of Amalfi, is Stella Maris, specialized in seafood and fish. Mm. It's a nice view. Imagine to stay there on, with the sunset and uh, enjoy a very nice glass of uh, wine or uh, a spritz and uh, enjoy your meal there. Or uh, another one that is close to, to the cathedral, um, the name is La Taverna degli Apostoli, more focused on vegetables and on wine, uh, on red wine. A, a nice, it's very nice because in the, it's in the prison, the, the, the wood, where the prison of the cathedral and it's the owner it's uh it's uh he loves uh, he loves hearts and so all the walls are covered by paintings and uh and yeah and drawings so, so it's another special place a few examples very nice now how long have you lived right on the water like that uh since i was born <laughs> oh i just can't but, imagine i mean you know because a lot of people say well even if I moved to Italy, I could never afford to live on the water because I love the water. So that, I'm just so impressed. <laughs> Well, uh, here uh, in my town, uh, the, the, it's Salerno, it's exactly at the entrance of the Amalfi Coast. Uh, the historical center is uh, basically facing the sea. So it's, uh, well, it's not so easy to find a terrace facing the sea, but I was lucky to find it. And so I have this spectacular view every day I wake up and I feel very, very lucky, I have to tell you. <laughs> the, the apartment is small, but the view is... <laughs> it's all it's yeah. all about the views you know I, I i would rather have a beautiful view and just the culture that you have and the food and the wine and all of that it, i don't care about the size of my no you are in peace with yourself when you have yeah. this uh, this view you are really in a uh, yes you know i have birds yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. So um, I was actually, I was going to, I was, there was a place I found I was going to take a boat to get there to eat. And I can't remember now. I'd have to look at my notes where that was. But um, there are the, some of those places that boats can actually take Probably it's close to Positano. Mm -hmm. um, there, is a, a, there are a few restaurants. One is uh, the restaurant called the Santa Teresa. There are a few of them. I don't know where you exactly you've been. Um, um, yes, uh, Santa Teresa. Another one is the the San Pietro. Uh, all the name of saints. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of people for people that have never been to Italy, if you would just kind of explain to them what would be a typical meal, 
you know, the different yeah. courses and what yeah. is what you do in your part of Italy food wise. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually have a very big meal. <laughs> can you can you, can you eat the best? I of the can. Cheese? I love it. <laughs> I love it. And um, well, our meal are very very big. Uh, even if uh, the ingredients we use are very simple, so you don't feel very heavy at the end of the meal. Even if you eat all the courses, you don't have to be scared about the meals. Of course, we have pasta in each meal. That is, uh, but you can choose to have uh, only a second course. But basically, we have an antipasto. Antipasto is based on vegetables, cheese, and uh, salami, and prosciutto, something like that. It's a mix of all these things. Uh, some fried vegetables as well, something very typical. Then we have the first course that for us is pasta all the time. <laughs> pasta with seafood, with clams, uh, with mussels, um, based on fish a lot. Um, yes, and uh, with the cherry tomatoes, uh, uh, something very easy but very tasty. Then we have a second course that here for us is mainly fish because uh, we have like sea bass, anchovies, uh, octopus, uh, fried small, small fishes, and, and also some very, very typical and local fish that we call uh, the pesce azzurro, like blue fish, that is very local and there is no translation in English because it's very, very local. And you can, uh, you can the, the way to cook it is mostly fried, we love to fry a lot, <laughs> or in the heaven with the potatoes. Yes easily uh, or uh, in, in, a, in a pan uh, with some cherry tomatoes and then we have a side course that is um, a salad or vegetables grilled vegetables or fried vegetables parmigiana uh, zucchini parmigiana zucchini eggplant eggplant parmigiana and zucchini parmigiana and um, and then uh, we have a dessert of course that is uh, uh, the most part of the time with something with lemons because we have many lemons here a special kind of lemon and so for example lemon sorbet or a lemon ice cream or a typical pastry is um, is a, a sponge cake filled with the lemon cream mm -hmm. uh, is uh, the name is lemon delice mm -hmm. and or the classical sfogliatella that is a crunchy pastry filled with ricotta cheese oh. and lemon peel uh, and at the end of course we have a limoncello <laughs> that is what <laughs> right. we <can> drink yes. <laughs> together uh, with a dessert a coffee and well that's uh, our meal <laughs> wonderful i know the first time i went and you know it was funny because we when they brought out the pasta we thought that was the meal there was so much of it you know and here a lot of times that is the entree the main meal and then of course they did the salad after the main course which was different and they said that was for that for digesting i think everything and and then the after dinner drinks the, the limoncello I know you said that um, your, and I, mine turned out great, by the way. It's so good. Um, so good. But and my family agrees. Uh, but I know you said that um, the, it's because the even the lemons come from the gods. And it's like paradise because you you guys just can eat them yeah. just as yeah. they are. I mean, here they would be very, you know, it, that wouldn't work here with our lemons. But, Yeah. Yeah, the, our, uh, we have a special quality of lemons here. Yeah. The name is Sfusato Amalfitano. That means that it's a specific quality of lemon growing only in Amalfi, with a very long shape, and it's quite sweet comparing with other lemons. So that's why we eat the lemons like uh, like another kind of fruit. Uh, we I have a, an example here of uh, the kind of lemons we have, and with a very thick white part, and it's quite sweet. So that's why we cut into slices and we can put into an aperitivo and then eat like it, like it is, like another kind of fruit. And um, yes, we use lemons for everything. We cook with lemons, we make a drinks, uh, aperitivo, uh, we make beauty treatments because uh, it's this, mm, we have a huge production of lemons. So that's the reason why. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So um, you said your family still lives there in, in that yeah. area? So yes. what are some customs maybe that you guys do that maybe people in the U.S. don't do or, yeah. you know, the fan, do you still do like the big Sunday family dinners or what, what happens there? 
we, we do the, the big family Sunday lunch for us. Not Our, uh, so, well, right. Um, it's funny because growing up, we, we, I grew up in a little town in Kentucky, and we would call the lunch dinner and the, at uh, night supper. But wow, it, really? And on Sundays, we would go to my grandmother's house with my cousins and, and you know, aunts and uncles, and, and that's what we would do. But, um, yeah, but I, I thought so because the, the Italian friends that I have there, you know, that's a big deal is to have your, your meal together on a Sunday yeah. in the middle of the now, day. Well, we are, our families are very close and attached. So we have a strong feeling of community in general and a strong feeling of attachment with the family. And um, we, and also with our uh, roots, not only with the family. So if we can, we try to stay here because even it's a place, uh, especially the south of Italy, that for some reason it's a, a and it's difficult because it's plenty of contradiction. Um, so it's uh, it's quite difficult to find a job not related with the tourism because the tourism for us is a main uh, income. And so if you want to do something different, you have to move in another town. This is what uh, people do in case they study something different from tourism. And so they move and they go to the north of Italy, but they still try to come back and they are in doubt all the time to come and do something different. And also you have to think that um, there are many people with the properties and the family properties and they start a business with their these properties. Uh, starting a bed and breakfast, an hotel or a restaurant, uh, an own business. And so they, they, start, they try to stay here and continue living here because the quality of our work life is very high. We have good food, good hair, uh, we have nature all around us, uh, and so um, I, I can understand that uh, these play a role in, uh, in choosing this place to continue to live here. Absolutely. I've, I've had um, other people tell me that a lot of times, uh, though, you do travel outside the country and then come back. Have you done that as well? Have you yes. traveled around? Yes, because I'm very curious, I'm a very curious people, and I love to travel. Yeah. I, I, I travel a lot, and uh, I also thought to um, to live in another place of Europe, because uh, uh, recently, well, eight years ago, I went to Brussels uh, to learn French, because uh, I wanted to learn another language. And so I went there during uh, the winter time, when I don't work here, and uh, I went there to learn French. And I, I was in love with Brussels for other reasons, that um, Brussels offers something different from here. Uh, there is uh, more culture, music, uh, uh, it's a um, multicultural place, so uh, I could uh, feel uh, with uh, something that I cannot have here uh, during the off-season. Um, and so I thought to to spend more time there uh, uh, to live uh, something different. And this is true. But then I have always to come back here, and uh, because I love my job, and I don't think I can find the, the same kind of job in another place. That's uh, for me the most important uh, uh, because I, I'm very passionate about it. But I travel a lot, not only for re for this reason to learn another language, also for pleasure. And I particularly love to travel by bike, by bicycle. <laughs> I'm a very active person, so I love to do active holidays as well. So I, since uh, about 20 years, I started to uh, to do holidays using bicycle. And I went, for example, from Berlin to Copenhagen. Wow. 700 kilometers. And I went to Croatia. All the coast of Croatia by bicycle, 900 kilometers, <laughs> and uh, the Sicily, all the way around Sicily in Italy, and uh, in Sardinia, a part of the coast in Sardinia. Uh, so whenever I can, I take my bicycle, and and as I as I love trekking, I also travel to uh, to visit the new places uh, and walk above the mountains. That is something that I. Uh, give me a very strong feeling of uh, uh, how can I explain? It's like when you walk up on, on the top of a mountain, you feel like uh, I was able to do that and have a, this is a spectacular view. I feel lucky. Yes, yes. And so I noticed you're a little bit. You've got your scarf on. So what is the what is the temperature there? 
And from tomorrow, we start to have a warmer temperature, but for the moment, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit unusual. Uh, we have 20 degrees, <laughs> 60 degrees. Sorry, 26 degrees. So it's quite uh, uh, it's quite cold for uh, for the season because we are uh, uh, at 20 of May. So uh, now should be warmer. <laughs> when you you mention off season, what is when is the best time to come? But well, weather wise, but also to save money. And I know those probably aren't the same. You know, I think that you the best way the best moment is the springtime or the autumn. Even I have to tell you that springtime starts in April. We can have very beautiful days, sunny days in April, but it can also it can also be rainy. Yeah. Uh, to be sure to have sun, you should come uh, in June. June is a very good month, or September. October is still good. Autumn is one of my favorite se season because it's still warm. Uh, the, the the sea uh, is still uh, warm, so you can uh, still swim in the in in the sea. Uh, the only thing is that the the days are shorter compared with the June, so you have less light. But the light is very warm, and uh, the view is very um, how can I say. Um, spectacular because it's uh, it's not cloudy in any way it's very the colors are very vivid mm -hmm. so these make uh, the landscape very interesting and very beautiful you have to come a few times not only one and, and yeah. like in <laughs> in the sea the Arctic was in different seasons I think that if you can right. of course that would be I would love to do that um, but I, I would suggest you to avoid July and August okay is that when you've got so many people there, tourists? Places because the Italians take the holidays almost uh, all in July uh, and August. Right. So uh, in August, uh, all the Italians are everywhere, and uh, places are <laughs> very crowded and more expensive as well. Sure. I um, was wondering too. A, a lot of people from here, I think, fly into Rome, uh, and then they come they come down but also there's a big airport in Naples so they could also come that route as well yes yeah I think the best way would be to uh, come in Naples mm -hmm. um, I think there are direct flights or at least uh, that were direct so. flights mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, once you are at the airport in Naples you can uh, my suggestion is uh, to to try to come uh, not with with a car because it's quite challenging to drive on this uh, very windy uh, coastal road because it's narrow and very busy. Uh, if you can find, uh, uh, there are several um, uh, private uh, transfer uh, that can bring you on the Amalfi Coast, uh, or uh, there is also a train going to the Sorrento side from Naples. So my suggestion would be you arrive in Naples and you spend two days in Naples. That I think it makes sense because it's um, it's a unique city, sure. uh, and uh, for me it makes sense to stop and visit Naples. And um, then from Naples you can take a, a private transfer to reach the Amalfi Coast or a, a, a train to go to the Sorrento side. Um, with the public transportation uh, to go to the Amalfi side it's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you, the only thing that you can do for, to make it easier, you can reach Salerno, that is the place where I, where I live, the town where I live. From Naples it's about 30 minutes by train fast train mm -hmm. from Naples, train station to train station. Mm -hmm. And once you are in Salerno, in the train station, you cross the road and you go to take the ferry. The ferry is one of the best way to, to, to visit the Amalfi Coast. There is a ferry connecting Salerno with Amalfi, Positano, Capri. Nice. So you everything by ferry. That's another good option. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, um, the, the group that I brought that I came there, I was one of the adult chaperones, we came there many years ago, but we from Sorrento side, we actually took an overnight, you know, boat and to Greece. So I guess that's another thing that some people do if they want to see both, you know, if they want to see Greece and Italy, so... Yes, they, they, absolutely, there are many people doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. But, they, well... They get for a few days in uh, on the Amalfi Coast, well, Sorrento is basically on the other side. We don't call it... We, Sorrento is not inside the Amalfi Coast, it's on the Sorrento side okay. of the peninsula. But 
we can see any through the Sorrento in, on the Amalfi coast. And so they, because the Sorrento is quite big, comparing with the towns on the other side, you know, because you've been here, and so there are, it's easier to stop in Sorrento with a, a big boat and uh, then go on, on on other places. Well, and I do think Capri is, is so worth going there. I, I loved doing that as well. It can be crowded because it's small, but... You know, yeah. I love the sandals there. <laughs> and I know a lot of people, a lot of, you know, celebrities go there and shop. You might see who knows who there. Yeah, but... Um, well, in Capri, I, my suggestion is if you can spend the two days, at least two days in Capri, because the most part, the most part of people come for daily uh, tours in Capri, so during the day. And it's very crowded during the day, the day but starting from the afternoon uh, to the evening, it's very enjoyable and it changes completely. So if you can spend at least one night in Capri. And also in Capri, if you go in, Capri is made of two big towns, big, bigger, not uh, like you can imagine, bigger, yeah. <laughs> but quite small as well, Capri and Anna Capri. And if you are in the center of these uh, towns, of course, it's very crowded with many shops and beautiful sandals or cloth. But if you go out of the center, there are several walking tours, again, nice, and all paved. So you are not uh, into the wild, but you are still inside uh, Capri on paved path. But you can reach beautiful views, uh, amazing views, and out of the crowded places. Um, for example, the way to the Blue Grotto, the, not the way to the Blue Grotto, um, it's one of the hikes that you can do, and it's uh, you can continue from the Blue Grotto on a path called the Fortini hike, Fortini, okay. like the fortress hike, That's, because there are two fortresses along the path, and it's very wide and it's spectacular. Or the natural arch, there is a very nice path going to a natural arch, and if you look uh, through the natural arch, you see this blue water, mm -hmm. uh, sea water, yes. it's pretty spectacular. And it's quite easy to reach this place, not very hard to do that, and it's out of the crowd. Yeah, I didn't think about hiking because when we went, we were on a boat and we came in by the water, but that would be really amazing to hike down there. Yeah. There is also a kind of, um, of a uh, chairlift going up to yes. the Monte Solaro, the, the highest uh, mountain of Capri, yes. and uh, you can also walk there if you want, and there is a spectacular view from there as well, a nice cafe where you can drink a wine and enjoy the view. So there are several uh, places where you can go in Capri. Visit also the villas in Capri because, you know, many people from uh, the north of Europe in the past, I'm talking about between the end of the 19th century and the first uh, 20th century, there were many people coming and living here. Mm -hmm. So they bought villas, they restored the villas, and there are several example like examples of beautiful villas, like Villa San Michele, that is in Anna Capri, um, it's very spectacular, you can go and visit this villa and dream uh, a lot because uh, of the beauty. The beauty is a big inspiration and so that's why many writers, poets uh, uh, came here in the past uh, taking inspiration from this beauty around. So uh, something that really gives a value uh, uh, the beauty. Italians are focused on beauty. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's what I love. And it's understandable because you're surrounded by it, you know, the art and all of it. So, you know, a lot of people uh, that have talked to me on this show, it, you know, they've changed sometimes occupations, not just where they live, but maybe uh, they weren't happy. I know a friend of mine in Spain was that way. She was doing uh, HR and, you know, had a big power job in Madrid and she just wasn't happy. And she's actually a tour guide on the uh, Camino de Santiago. So um, tell them a little bit about, you know, wh what did you study and then what happened with that? 
Yes. Well, I studied information technologies at the university, and when I finished my study, when I was graduated, I started to teach information technologies to adults, uh, so people who want to learn uh, how to use a computer, uh, and uh, that was uh, something that I loved to do because I was in relation with people. But I, by that, then I decided that uh, working on a computer all the time in a company was not the best for me because uh, I was isolated and not in relation with people so at a certain moment I decided to follow my passion um, as I love to walk and stay in the nature since I, since I was 12 I started to walk above these mountains so and I'm passionate about the national parks and I work with some national parks as a volunteer I decided to become a guide first of the Vesuvius National Park and and then uh, on the Amalfi Coast. So I took a class and I became, uh, I studied as, uh, to, to become a guide. And, and so uh, I would uh, definitely um, do the same again. Um, I was uh, sad because I, I studied five, day, five years uh, information technologies. But then, you know, you cannot uh, continue doing something that you don't like for the, an entire uh, life. Right. So... Yeah, I, I'm proud to be to have been co uh, brave to change my life because I'm very happy now about what I do. Yes, and that's you know that's why part of this show is called you know living authentic lives. It is that more and more I just realize how many people aren't really happy with what they do, and they a lot of people have the mind set of, well, I'll just do it and then I can retire and then I can live. And that's great if somebody, but some people, you know, don't get that chance. I mean, life is short and, um, and even if they do, I mean, that's still a lot of years to maybe when you could have done something that you loved more, but it is, it is scary. It's, you know, it takes courage to do that. Um, yeah. so that's probably going to lead right into the last question that I always ask people. And it is, based on your life journey, uh, what advice would you give a younger you or a younger person? Yeah. The advice would be to listen to herself or himself uh, the deepest, deepest part of, uh, of ourselves says what we want really to do. And so don't follow the others saying this is better for you because nobody can know what is the best for you <laughs> except you. So uh, this is what I learned uh, following first uh, the advices of other people, uh, knowing better what, what was better for me and learning that was not right for me. So I would uh, definitely say follow your passion. And your passion is very clear since you are very young. <laughs> yes. Because uh, it's something that call you, calls you. Uh, that is not, that is not, uh, passion is not related with mind. It's related with uh, something very deep in our that you feel. Absolutely. So this is what I would uh, tell. Take your time. Don't feel guilty if you don't uh, if you don't know what to do for uh, a, a, for a, a part of the, of your time, you know. And just to stop and wait until you you understand. Sure. <laughs> I start to become philo a philosopher. <laughs> no, but I, I, I do. I so agree with that. And even though I've been a teacher my whole career, uh, among other things, a writer and other things, but um, even so, you know, I tell students that um, the one of the best teachers is travel and seeing what the options are, meeting people who are different, who've taken different paths. You know, so often we make decisions. I've always thought it's kind of sad that, you know, students sometimes are pushed to make decisions when they're so young and they haven't seen enough of the world to e or even their own country or even their own, you know, adult world around them to even know what, what choices are there for them. So... Yeah. I'm a big believer in the heart too. I, I, you know, that's I, sometimes it gets me into trouble, but I always try to follow my heart. So, well, thank you so much. I so appreciate this. This has been great, and um, I just what a beautiful, beautiful country, beautiful city. Your terrace is amazing. So I'm sure. What are you going to do the rest of the day? 
Well, I'm going to cook uh, anchovies. I'm going to make par anchovies parmigiana, so layers of anchovies mm. with, uh, with lemons and uh, with a bit of olive oil in the oven, oh, wow. uh, uh, a glass of white wine, cold and nice, and uh, that's my evening. <laughs> oh, how nice. Yeah, because there, of course, you're, what, I think, seven hours ahead of us. Um, yeah. That was one thing, you know, anchovies are horrible if they're like out of a can, but when I ate them fresh there, wow. it. <laughs> it is, they are great, especially when they're cooked the way you just said. So, well, have a yeah. great evening. The best way would be fried, but I cannot fry all the time. <laughs> right, right. But at least you use olive oil, I'm sure. So that's. You know, yeah, but uh, still heavy, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I that's like right. to be fit <laughs> because I walk a lot. <laughs> that's right. Well, thank you so much. This has been so great seeing you again. And um, we will put links to where people can find you if they would yeah. like to do either the online tour or hopefully, you know, they'll also get there and do the, the tour in person. Hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. I, 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 because I love to meet people and share these, uh, these, uh, these uh, days, some days, one day, a few hours. Uh, and we, we share a lot and we always, uh, I always have good memories of people uh, I met. Yes. So well, thank you so much. You are more than welcome to join me and visit this special part of Italy. I yeah, I would love that as well. So thank you very <laughs> much and you have a great day. You're welcome. <laughs>